Okay, so for our side sweat fringe, there are three main things that I always um, think about, and to me, they're the key points. The very first one is how much fringe do you actually want to keep in, or do you want to put inside of that area? So when you look at the head form, the very first thing that I do is I decide what's the maximum amount that I can put in the, the fringe. And that is based on the high point of the head. So when the head is upright, you take a look, put a comb right on the head, and where it balances, that is the high point of the head. And then you go from there out to what I call corner front. So if you were to place a little box on the front of the head, it would be right where that um, part goes. So what you would have is you would have kind of this maximum amount of hair right here. Turn her just a bit. And that would be the maximum amount you can put in the fringe without it um, infringing on the rest of the cut. And so that's what I have. I've got that um, maximum amount. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decide how much is going to be on each side. This is key because if I were to take all of this hair, and let's say I wanted to make the fringe go off to the left, means I have to pull it to the right to cut it. So if I pull this all the way off to the left and cut it, distance will always equal length. So it's going to be very short, well, a little bit longer here, but very short on this side. So it just isn't going to work out. So what I want to do is, <laughs> Denver, I'd love to come to Denver. Um, what I want to do is I want to decide how much hair is going to be on each side of that fringe. I like to take a little bit of a diagonal parting up to that high point. So I'm going to do that. So let's say this is going to be on, the part is on her right hand side. And so I'm going to take this little bit of hair right here, get that right, there we go. This little bit of hair right here that falls onto the right hand side, and I'm going to take that and clip it out of the way. So now what I have is I have the hair that's going to be sweeping off to the left. So that's like the main thing you want to do. You want to find the amount of fringe you're going to have and then how much do you want on each side of the part. So if you guys have any fringe questions, go ahead and ask and I'll see if I can catch them as they go by. So now what I'm going to, to decide is how heavy do I want the fringe? So if I want the fringe to be very heavy, my partings are going to be closer to horizontal. If I want it to be lighter or sit very, um, kind of feathery, my partings will get closer to vertical. Whenever you go more vertical, your partings, your, your end result will always be softer. So let's say that somebody has um, maybe a, a high recession area or fine hair, and you want to keep a little bit more weight in that fringe. We would then make this a little bit more horizontal. The reason for that is we're going to be cutting the fringe parallel to the part. So, I'm taking my parting right across that area, just a little bit, almost a 45 degree angle. Then I'll comb the hair directly off of the part. Right about here, I've had a previous fringe in there, I've got a little hole, don't tell. So right about here, and I'm going to choose how much do I want to expose. If I want it to hit at the cheekbone area on this side, then I pretty much have to go past the cheekbone area in order to start. So I'm gonna sit right there and cut that. And let's take a look at how that sits. Right at the eyebrow and it opens up the cheek area. So let's go ahead and I'm going to continue with those same partings. And I'll do about three or four partings. Now I'm going to be in um, Sarasota this next Monday doing a class at a salon called Cutting Loose. I'm very excited about that. And then on Tuesday in Sarasota, I am taking appointments. And I know I've got maybe two more openings available. So if you know anybody in that area that wants to get their hair cut, my booking link is in my bio or in my link tree, or you can go to sonabredo.com and, and access it through there. So once again, I'll be in Sarasota. I'm doing a class for a private salon there, and then I'll be cutting hair at their salon. So it's always fun to go in and cut hair at different places. Okay, so all I'm doing is repeating exactly what I've already done. So I'm continuing with my diagonal partings, over directing 
to that stationary guide and then cutting parallel to my part. Here we go, last section, right on top of my part line. There we go. And then we have just a really nice sweeping fringe off to that side. Now, how do we balance the other side? This is one of the harder things to do when you're working with a side swept fringe. So I'm going to let this down. Now, if I were to take this and pull it all the way across, I would be cutting this top hair a little bit short. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just hold this down, almost in natural fall, and then take a look at where I'm balancing on this side. I want to make sure that I'm going to balance with that piece, not necessarily this piece. This is never going to fall um, directly down. You really won't see it. So I'm going to make sure that I'm balancing over here and then take a look at that. Maybe a touch more. The way that you dry this fringe is also very important. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but when you, um, when you part or when you style a fringe and your, then your client styles it, if they style it the way they always have, it will look just like it always looks. I mean, you can create whatever you want with styling basically. So as I style this fringe, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be draping the hair back and forth. So I'll be draping it across the, um, the head form. So I'll release these. I call this beach ball styling. If you think about a beach ball and where the hair falls off of the top of the head, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Will I ever take appointments in Vancouver? I don't know, my sister lives in Vancouver, so maybe I might, might go up there. Um, I have a friend in Nanaimo, um, Edwin Johnston, and he has the Cutting Room Collective, and it's an amazing salon. He's an amazing hairstylist. He cut my hair, not, not this time, but a long time ago. It's great. Um, but maybe I can cut hair at his salon. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna drape these across. So you want to go um, all the way across so that you're covering the full shape of the skull. So drape them back and forth. And what this does is it gives you a really nice um, flow to the hair and the hair won't stay in one spot. Got a little tangle there, come on. Now the air direction has to go the same as where your brush is going. So we're going to go back and forth. So many times I see people blow drying a fringe like this and they just, they just get in there and they start blow drying and they like lift all the hair up and it just doesn't work very good. So I've got that little tangle that I need to get rid of. Best laid plans. Okay. Um, somebody asked about um, if your client has a really strong widow's peak. It's hard to do a really good side part. Um, I have a pretty strong widow's peak myself, and it always ends up being a little bit off center as opposed to a nice side part. So I don't, I don't really know um, what I would do with that. Maybe leave it a little bit heavier, actually. Okay, so just making the airflow go the same direction. I'm just getting used to this new dryer from um, the new Dyson dryer. It's really nice. Dries the hair really fast, nice and smooth. So just back and forth. And I do that before I use the round brush. Okay, let's see what other questions you guys have. Um, Oh, my own haircut. Okay, everyone always wants to know what my haircut is. It's just a simple bob. Um, but it has a little bit of layering in the top. And so a little bit of layering in the top and a little bit of texture in it, and that's all. It really is very simple. Okay, I'm going to grab my round brush. And just brown, round brushing this under. Now, I'm in Cleveland in two weeks, and I have, like, I think two more spaces available in my class, and it's a hands-in class. It's all about texturizing. So all the texturizing techniques that you see my, me do um, will be exploring in the class. 
Okay, so you can see how this is kind of sweeping off to the side. Get that going there. Okay, and then, see, I'm going to take my texturizers, and these are my 40 tooth texturizers, and I love these working with the side swept fringe because it helps keep the fringe off to the side. So what you do is you come in and you know short hair will always push long hair. So we're just putting a shape almost inside of our existing shape. And I'm coming across right along the bottom edge, just a couple of different swipes here. And all of them working short to long. Then what happens is this ends up staying over beautifully. So it just kind of supports that side sweep or side sweat side sweep and then I'll do a little bit on this side as well I have a whole um, series of or a whole class um, it's about six hours we only cut this top part of the head we cut the, the fringe for like six hours we go from long into little micro fringe it's really a great class um, I feel like that might need one more right there okay so what we've done is we've Kind of covered the three most important um, parts of a side swept fringe. Number one is how much fringe do you actually want to keep inside of that area? Do you want to open it all the way up or do you want to go with less fringe? The second is um, how to balance. So you can see how this is balanced nicely um, across. So I didn't try and blend. If you take a look at this, these, these areas don't blend. So they're, you know, a little bit separate. And what I blended or what I made balance was the pieces on the sides. So these two areas are what are balanced as opposed to this being as short as that guy is right there because nobody's going to wear it straight down. And then also the drying of this fringe, which is what you have to teach your clients is how to drape it back and forth so that they get a nice flow to the fringe utilizing the, my texturizers, the 42 texturizers, to go along that edge. And for the original cut, I used my six-inch angel blades.